Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Corey Wilkins for Ears Only Audio here in Il Cajon, California. It has been a long time since I put out a video. I do apologize for that. I've had some stuff going on in the studio. I've been working on a podcast with my buddy Alan Camp called Arc Radio. And I've had uh, two weeks of vacation in here, believe it or not. I don't know how I managed to finagle that. But uh, we went up to South Dakota, spent some time in the Black Hills, had a wonderful time just camping with the family and, and having a lot of fun. Now it's back to it. This is really one of my very few videos that's going to be specific to Pro Tools users because we're going to talk about the brand new Avid Complete Plugin Bundle. And this is something that you can subscribe to and you get basically all of the Avid plugins. Uh, it's over 50 of them. And if you want to pay monthly, it's $5 a month. If you want to go ahead and buy the annual subscription, it's $50 for the year. Now you got to take into account that most of these plugins cost, you know, between $150 and $350 each. And this is for over 50 plugins. So even if you took one plugin, it would take you, you know, maybe as many as six or seven years of the subscription fee just to pay for one plugin. So a lot of the times when people have gripes about the subscription services, it's because the subscription is pretty expensive in comparison to the price of the actual product where you know maybe if you subscribe to it for two or three or four years you're now paying more money than if you would just bought the damn thing outright from the beginning. This is not the case with the Avid Complete Plugin bundle. Now some of the things they have in here are emulations of classic gear and I want to get to some of those. So I've taken a song that I'm working on with my friend Alan. And we're just going to look at these plugins over a drum bus just for simplicity's sake. They obviously have other amazing uses. But um, just to keep things easy and to, to really hear what things are doing, I just have some stuff going on on the drum bus of this song. And... Uh, We'll start with everything in Bypass, and then we'll talk about each thing as we add it in. So, um, without wasting any more of your time, let's jump right into Pro Tools and see what we've got. So we have our drums soloed up in this song, but the first thing I have here is actually on the Master Bus, and this is the Avid Tape Emulation. Plug in. Real Open tapes. that up. Real tape saturation. FX TV and edit view. Let's open up so we can in see FX the TV controls. 3.5 dB drive. Perim. We're driving it a little bit, but not super hard. Um, we're running it at uh, 15 ips. 1.5 ips. Speed. Perim off. Noise. Perim 0.0 .0 dB. I don't have extra tape noise on. Like you know, the good thing about tape plugins is you can get you know some facsimile to the sort of compression and saturation without all the hiss, so um, I'm fine with that. Off one five off. Okay, so I have that bypassed right now, and uh, is what you're going to hear is um, just some drums. They already have had some mixing done to them. I have the console one SSLE strip across all my drum tracks, and I've done you know some compression and EQ and so forth. Uh, here, but this is this is what we've got without the tap the tape saturation on the master bus. Okay, let's put it on. Off. Okay, just turn the bypass off, and this is what we have now. Okay, I'll bypass it and bring it in and out. Um. Off. Um. Um, um. Off. Okay, so 
is is what I hear there is I hear that sort of stereotypical Next. rounded off transients, a little bit of saturation, you know, nothing extreme or anything like that. It, it is subtle, but I really feel like across your mix bus, some tape saturation can make a huge difference. Just, you know, you, you might be mixing into a compressor. I am here. You might be uh, mixing into an EQ. And then having that tape saturator as sort of your third line of defense can really be helpful because it, you know, it can roll off some of those really harsh highs. It can um, accentuate some of the nice warmth in that sort of lower range without getting too cloudy. And it definitely will help out your compressor by just sort of rounding off some of those front transients and, and it'll make it a lot easier on your mastering engineer. So there's that. Okay. Groups, group list, oh, drums, aux track. Now let's have a look at the drums. I have a couple of plugins on my drum bus here. In the first, in my A slot, A bypass, Fairchild 660. Is the Fairchild 660. Plugin. This is uh, modeled basically after the, you know, the, the, it's been referred to as the Beatles compressor. Now, actually, I guess before I get to um, before I get to this, let's take a listen with the compressor off, and then I will turn it on. Okay, now I'll turn it on. Off. Okay, this should be really obvious, but I'll just put it in bypass and then um, switch it back and forth a couple of times. But this this should be really obvious. Okay, pretty amazing. That's some pretty uh, extreme compression. Probably too much for just your standard drum bus, but I figured that was the most obvious way. And what I really want to say about this plugin is one thing that I've noticed between the hardware units and the software emulations, and, and I've been fortunate enough to actually have hands-on with some old 1176s and uh, DBX-160s and, and uh, retro state level tube compressors and stuff like that. Um, but one thing that I really notice is it with most of the emulations, like let's say you have the piece of hardware sitting right here, which I don't, but let's say that I did, and I dialed in, say, 3 dB of gain reduction on the hardware. You would hear that, and you'd be like, man, that's, that's really getting in there. That's digging in. That's aggressive. That sounds great. And then you dial in the same amount of gain reduction on the plugin that's supposed to emulate that piece of hardware. And is what I find is is the the um, emulations, the plugin emulations, just don't seem to be quite as grabby. They don't <laughs> hammer that sound down. Uh, except for this one. This one really is now. I have never had the opportunity to go grab a uh, Fairchild. So. Take that for what it's worth, but I love how grabby this is. I mean, that's 3 dB of gain reduction. That's it. It's just 3 dB, but it is just grabbing. So let's um, let's play with some more subtle settings. On Six point one time constant parameter. So this time your constant is parameter. is to uh, this is how you get your attack and release settings. Now in the Fairchild, the attack settings tend to be very fast. And the release settings can go from pretty fast, like what this is, to very slow. So I'm just going to scroll through these time constants here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, five, four, three, two. 
Okay, I feel like two, one and two definitely have better release profiles, but I, I like the release profile of two for this just a little bit more um, because it's not quite so fast. So it's not, it's not uber aggressive like this one is right here. See, that's just releasing really fast and becoming very, very aggressive. So we'll just go ahead and two. put it on two. That sounds really nice. So we got a little saturation. We've got a little um, compression going on. Now on the drum bus for some EQ, I've added the emulation of the Pultec. So again, let's just hear these drums without it. Okay, let's put in the Pultec. Off. I think I actually had that on for part of the uh, other demonstration. FXTV I apologize for that. In FXTV at 3.0, Here are my low settings. I'm boosting the low by 4 dB. 3.0, low I'm attenuating the low by 3 dB, the old Poltec trick. 1.4, high boost parameter. I got a 1.4 boost on the top end. 0.0, .0 high end parameter. Okay. You are currently on the and parameter. I'm not attenuating the high end. 20 hertz, low frax parameter. The low is at 20 hertz. 7.3, bandwidth parameter. There's my bandwidth. It's a little narrow. 1, 2K, high frax parameter. And 12K is the high frequency. So again, let's hit play, and I'll bypass this in and out. Right now it's in. On. Put it back in. Off. Out. Off, off, off. Come on. Um, there it is. Put it back in. Um, um, off. I don't know about you, but I think that sounds pretty darn amazing. Um, that low end just really hits you in the chest without uh getting rumbly or boomy or muddy or cloudy or whatever you want to call it and that top end just opens up on those cymbals and that snare drum it's it's really quite amazing ignoring next key press high ball floating windows okay one more thing is i have a reverb the avid complete plugin bundle comes with a number of different reverbs so if you're just using stock plugins and pro tools you will finally have some choices Besides Deverb, not that I'm hating on Deverb. There's nothing wrong with Deverb. You can do some amazing things with it. So is what I have is I have this one that is uh, set up to be a bit of a room plug, plug in. emulation. Three, set auto drum room A. Insert positions large tracking room library. I've got it set as large tracking room. And let me put it in. Off. Now, I actually did go in and adjust the decay time from 1.5 seconds to I think around 750 milliseconds. 1.5 is a little bit big. Uh, I want it to sound kind of realistic. Now I have uh, the return kind of cranked up all the way just so you can really hear the verb. And this is what it sounds like. Obviously too much. Let me mute the drum bus. I have it set up, I have it set up as a pre-fader send so I can mute the drum bus and we'll still hear the verb. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let me kind of bring it down to a more reasonable level uh, so you can get a sense of what this would sound like more in context. So to me, that's a pretty decent room sound. And inside the controls, 
FXTB and that be in FXTB. You actually have a separate pre-delay for your early reflections and for your reverb. Um, and you can really control uh, those two things so you can have it sort of set up to be more of a early reflection kind of heavy or more of a later reflection reverb if you wanted to move something farther back in the mix. So the control panel on this is really nice. There's lots of ways you can kind of manipulate this and check it out. Um, and those are just four of the plugins that I've had the opportunity to dig into in the Pro Tools Complete plugin bundle from, from Avid. It, I cannot wait to get into some more of these. I've kind of tooled around with just a couple of them real quick just to kind of see what they did. But I really wanted to dig into a few of the uh, vintage emulations. And maybe what I'll do for a future video is the uh, Bomb Factory emulation of the LA-2A versus the Waves CLA-2A. And we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. That's right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. This is my daughter, Emily, and she's been hanging out with me while we do this whole video. And uh, we've been having a lot of fun. She's going to start engineering by the time she's about four or five years old. That's what I think. You want to? Do you want to um, do some assistant engineering in my studio? Do you want to help me record music? Yes, yes! All right. Can you do that Excellent. when you grow up, too? You can do that when you grow up. That's right, honey. When Tom... I, I'm taller than you. <laughs> you probably are going to be taller than me. That doesn't take too very much, kiddo. So you are watching Ears Only Audio. If you like what you see in here and if you've enjoyed uh, this video, please do hit that like button and, and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it a ton. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some more videos for you guys again uh, now that I'm not planning a huge two-week camping trip vacation. All right, I'll be seeing you next time.